Hey guys, and welcome to Today Glue Today, and today we're going to be talking about the survival mode beta, as well as the news for the ban to unban to reband again. It's it's kind of weird, but I, I got a lot of details for you when it comes to those different types of news. So we're going to get into it first. So first, Fallout 76. Now they actually released some data when it came to the actual survival mode that we'll be having. So the first thing that you'll be seeing is that you're going to be getting a 20% buff in any XP whatsoever. So personally, that's going to be good. All the PvP restrictions, like the whole tagging mechanics and everything else, that's turned off. Especially for when you're trying to be doing that in the wasteland. So, the other thing that you're going to be mentioning is, will I be able to see the players on the map? Yeah, you will be able to see the players on the map, but not on your location not anything else you'll only be seeing players that have a bounty system so it's kind of like gta but kind of not like gta so people are going to have cap bounties that are, you can actually set to other people on the server which is kind of like different but okay so there's going to be a few different other things that are going to be added so you would only be able to fast travel to the camp to the vault and to a few different locations when it comes to like train stations uh, fast travel is also limited to these locations. So between the camp 76 and the train stations That's what you got when it comes to like PvPing and getting everything else different when it comes to that environment So it's gonna be very hot in different areas when it comes to server camps. You'll have Prob you can probably claim them as well And you can probably fast travel to them because they are like a server camp So most likely that too, but it wasn't included in the patch notes. Hopefully that's the case so, they have confirmed that it's going to be all your junk and then a random amount of aid that you have in your aid category. So, if you are carrying a whole bunch of aid, like, it's not going to really help you, but you're going to be getting double the caps. You're going to be getting, like, so much more XP when it comes to this, and it's going to be helpful. So, if you're going to be leveling a character, it's actually going to be easier to do it on the survival beta, quote-unquote, that they're doing. So there's actually going to be leaderboards that they're going to be having for the whole iteration of like different people, XP gained, events complete, enemy skilled. So like they're going to have different leaderboards when it comes to this. So it's going to be like this open world survival slash GTA feel. I don't know how I feel about that, but I'm just like, all right, well, this person's going to be alive for like five hours. Maybe you want to go kill that person. So the only way that you can kill that person is to set a bounty on their head and find out their location. So then you have to walk on over there. But then what if they leave the server? It says nothing about when somebody leaves a server instance that you can't go and pursue them. Like, what what's the time to get off a server when you actually see somebody? So, like, there's going to be a few different things wh which are really unique. So, here's the other thing. We know that there's going to be weekly rewards now. So starting March 26th to April, the first reward is going to be the Crushing Blow. Uh, something called Double Damage if your target is at full health. So it's instigating uh, with 50% limb damage. Just a little short barrel. And it's like, why? Why, why do you need this grenade launcher? It's a short barrel. Like, it's, it doesn't really serve a purpose when it comes to it. Then there's the, the medical malpractice, which is just a 44 pistol with VATS criticals will heal your group. And then 33% uh, VATS chance. Now, this is going to be pretty cool that you're going to be seeing, like, other weapons that are going to be limited time with, like, limited name purchases when it comes to this. So, the Soul Survivor. So there will be 10% 10, uh, 10 damage to players, so that's assassins. And then 10% 10, uh, 10 damage while aiming. And then another 50 damage resistance while aiming. So it's an aim gun that they think that is fine. But, I mean, an anti-armor would be better. So an anti-armor, explo uh, not explosive because it doesn't work together still. An anti-armor vats would be better. Unless you're aiming at farther distances. Then there's the guarantee, which is double damage with full health. How about we just do double damage? Because it's a fat man. And fat mans don't really do that much damage in the first place whatsoever. And then there's the action hero, which, I mean, they're going to probably make a Rambo reference. But 
like the action hero shoots an additional projectile so it's a two shot uh 25 faster fire rate with 15 percent faster reload so i mean it's a pretty good gun in itself and then there's the quick fix which is like a junkies like stabby stab knife the switch blade so they'll have that and a few different things now they they really say that the adventure mode slap damage adjustments because that's what they are quoting on it once uh, open beta is live for survival mode we're making a change to reduce all damage that would be dealt by you by the players that is not uh currently hostile with to zero so there will be no slap damage like there was in my last videos when it comes to grief weapons, kind of like the Mr. Handy Buzz Blade, the Ripper, or anything else like that. But we'll be seeing especially this. This adjustment is effectively uh, eliminates slap damage, which uh, would greatly reduce the likelihood that you'll fall victim to any unwanted PvP. So all those people that wanted to just play to play and not be bothered, I mean, they're going to be on there, but there will be some people that will take the risk and go into survival that are the casual players that will go into the survival mode setting because they want that 20% buff XP because what's the best way to satisfy your time is that you're going to have to go to the survival mode so that you have that 20% XP buff. So if you want to like level up quicker, like some people might take that risk. Um, so especially for that, like if you have pacifist mode disabled it will return fire against other players and will become hostile towards them so if you are in pacifist it will be zero but if you're not in pacifist mode it will like not be zero so you'll have the quote unquote slap damage for what i'm seeing here additionally attempting to claim other players workshop or having someone else's contest your own uh will open up hostility to that player also you will take damage from environmental hazards that have been caused by the other any other player such as a car exploding so if you shoot a car like it'll explode uh, with further update we're currently planning to extend the protection to camp as uh, well so which means that your home cannot be damaged by other players as tactics so long that your camp is not hostile toward those players so the griefing videos that people have been doing like they can't even grief the pve players when they're in passivist mode which i i i don't know like so now you can have an artsy fartsy base and nobody can just go around and blow it up which to be fair, like it's the adventure mode on top of everything else, where I can see a ma wide majority of the players going to be staying there in that mode. But there will be uh, the other times, like especially the unrateable bases that have been out there because of these mechanics. Like most people that wanted to do that, that just wanted to be left alone, made their unrateable base, like I put in my videos in the past. But at the same time, it's just like that. Also, we mentioned previously that the next week's beta launch marks our first implementation of more pvp focused game modes so everybody that has been disliking my videos because i was talking about people that are wanting to do pvp well i'm sorry but here's the thing bethesda is wanting pvp and they are wanting more content for pvp because they realize that half of the community for Fallout 76 is for PvP. They're going to be for it. They want the mechanic. They want you to use everything that they put in. They're not going to take it out. So you're going to be getting the PvP no matter what. Okay? Especially in that regard. If you want to have the full benefit, you will have to not only play the adventure mode, but you'll also have to play the survival mode as well. I wonder how nuking the queen will be in um, the PvP aspect. And especially in survival mode. I'm very curious. Do you get better rewards if you do it in the survival mode? And then you're shooting other players? I'm I'm very curious. Um, that's going to be really big. So the second part of this is the, the ban, the unban waves that has happened uh, throughout Fallout 76. So during the last wave of bans that I've interviewed people and I've had that kind of stage. Those people that were interviewed were then unbanned. And then they were rebanned. So during the, I think the first day of like the new events that came out, 
they were actually having some fun. They played on those characters that were previously banned. And then, after that, they were rebanned. So, I have a few clips that people want to show their stuff that they have been telling me that, look, this is my inventory of all three characters. This is my inventory of what has happened to me. And some people just left. I mean, at this point, like, it's a joke. There's even, like, a little letter. I can't confirm or deny this as well, but... It's just like, hey, my name is Joshua, and then it says the rest. And then they said the account, like, most people had their uh, accounts uh, temporarily lifted because it wasn't a complete ban because they couldn't deal with the amount of stuff on people's inventory, so they unbanned those characters. So those characters then came back into the circulation, and from what they found is that they were still causing lag to the server, so that they rebanned everybody as a blanket statement on top of everything else so it's just like oh, okay yeah that's gonna happen so we don't know everything again i can't confirm or deny it i just have this little bit on top of everything else so this is the fallout news for today and pretty much i am looking forward to this new content i know i still need to do the fast shot event or however you say it, I, I can't enunciate it. And I'm going to be farming for my own stuff as well. You might be seeing me uh, in the world, but I'm mainly going to be hanging out in Discord, trying to figure out like what I'm going to do with this new PvP update. Especially, will it bring people back? Will it be enough to bring people back? And with the all these awards, like personally, I would say as soon as we get the legendary, like, vendor when it comes to fallout 76 we should have a good understanding of what to actually have and for everybody that was just like it was clickbait for the legendary spot location from my last video as well dude how else can you explain having power armor having laser weapons combat rifles noise actualization in this kind of train station for this kind of set setup now, when we have in the actual roadmap, it shows a mole miner legendary thing. Now, we don't know exactly what it is, but at the same time, I think personally it's the train station. I never said and confirmed that it was there. I just put it as the thumbnail. That's part of clickbait and how YouTube works. Now, if you might dislike it, that's that's fine with you. But at the same time, I'm still going to address that criticism when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I still hold to my word. I'm not going to take back and say I'm sorry or whatever. That's my personal opinion of what I think it is. And it was extremely upvoted on Reddit. And then I went there myself. And I confirmed for what was actually there. And it was actually, a, it would be a pretty good idea. Because I mean, it's in the high tier area. It's surrounded by all the high tier zones. I personally think that that would be a high tier legendary shop. If it's not the mole miner himself, okay, it might be a, a vendor bot, okay? You might not agree with it, but we can only wait and see until we get that time. Just like with the fast shot events, it didn't start until like 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They didn't really give us a time to when it actually started for most players. But that's when I had the problems. I tried to do it myself probably... 40, 50 times for server hopping. It's a pain in the butt to do. There's some people in my server that have like groups of 20 people and they just server hop to just find these events so that they can get these cool legendary stuff that's for a limited time because the Fashad Parade was only for a limited time. So then you, they'll be so marked up on like the trading markets. That'd be crazy. Again, if you guys like this kind of content, please leave a like, leave a comment down below and have a good one.